Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. I'm Rex Finance, and today we're gonna dive right back into one of my favorite series. Is series series I've ever done on my channel? I don't know how to say that. What's the plural of series? Siri? Uh, nah, probably not. But you get the point. We're gonna be talking about three stocks I'm buying today for the month of July. I need you guys to know that I am a long-term investor. These are not overnight pump and dump plays. I'm not trying to swing trade or day trade these companies. These are companies that I believe in strongly. And that being said, my financial situation is different from everybody else's that is watching this video. So is my personal risk tolerance. Everybody has a different risk tolerance. So just because I'm investing in these companies does not mean you should do the same. Please use your brain. Be smart. Yeah. If you guys wouldn't mind, I appreciate you hitting that subby dubby, the subscribe a Lucia button, the subscribe a doodle, subscribe. Thank you. Today, I have one high risk investment I'm making, one medium risk investment that I'm making, and also one low risk investment that I'm making that I believe are all going to vastly outperform the markets over the coming years. If you think the way I think is interesting, you can join my membership down below via the Patreon. There's a few spots left at $3 a month, $3 bills per month. That's all it is. We have a great time in there. I believe we have the best community and I don't think it's close, but I also show you how I personally value companies. I make valuation spreadsheets available to my members. I provide my economic outlooks and market analysis every single week. So if that interests you, give it a shot. If you don't like it, you can always cancel. And I'll, I'll provide a 100% refund. If you reach out to me and say you weren't satisfied, I'll give you your money back. So that's a low risk investment just to start this video off. Either hit the join button down below or hit the link in the pinned comment to my Patreon. I'd love to see you guys join. The first stock I'm talking about here is the highest risk play in my own personal portfolio. Out of any company I own, Workhorse is the most risky one that I have. This is a $180 million company and it is a penny stock, 97 cents currently. Now I've been doing tons of research on this company over the past couple of months and I decided to finally pull the trigger and I currently own 10,000 shares of Workhorse stock. And if they continue to execute, I will double my position to 20,000 shares. Right now at a market cap of 180 million and a share price of 97 cents, the company is basically priced for bankruptcy. And that's where I'm gonna start, looking at the balance sheet. Workhorse actually has zero debt, no debt whatsoever, and they have about $80 million in cash. Also, they can raise funds via equity, via an ATM that's in place, where they dilute shareholders. I don't think it's the smartest thing to do, but that is a financial lever they can pull to stave off bankruptcy. The management team themselves believe they have sufficient capital to support current and projected funding requirements, mostly because every single vehicle that they sell moving forward is contribution margin positive, meaning that the revenues and sales they receive by selling these vehicles outpaces and outweighs the direct cost of producing each vehicle. But in order to reach profitability, you don't just need to outpace your variable costs, you also need to outpace your fixed costs, which is a matter of volume. If this company produces vehicles and delivers vehicles, they will end up being profitable. Profitability at this point, because each truck that they build is contribution margin positive, is a matter of how many vehicles they produce. If you still haven't caught on to what this company does, they produce electric commercial vehicles as well as commercial drones. For example, they have a horsefly as well as the Falcon drone, both that are actually receiving purchase orders today. There is no huge retooling of a facility that Workhorse needs to do. They have all of the resources that they need in order to become a successful company doing billions of dollars in sales. I actually put together a valuation spreadsheet for this one available to my Discord members once again, so join that if you want access to it. I'll put it up on the screen, but I believe this company's gonna be doing about a billion dollars in revenue by 2025. As a result of that, I actually think that I could see over 2,000% return on my investment in workhorse stock by 2025. It remains to be seen. The management team needs to continue to execute, but this is a really high risk, high reward play. Every single dollar I'm putting into workhorse, I am prepared to lose. If you want more information on the company, hit the eye in the top right hand corner. I made a video solely dedicated to workhorse. Stock number two on my list is a company called Flux Power, ticker symbol F. 
F-L-U-X. This stock has literally gone nowhere this year. It is flat on the year. And this is simply just because it's a small cap company. You might have noticed that this year, most of the stock market rally has been headlined by the biggest eight tech companies in the world. Mid caps and small caps have still kind of been left in the dust and they're underperforming. I believe that has to do with the Fed's terminal rate. As we get closer to the peak interest rate at the Fed, I believe small caps and mid cap companies their stock prices will begin to trend upwards. Even over the past five years, small cap companies, their stocks are basically flat, only up 10% over the past five years. Keep in mind, in the stock market, you wanna be doubling your money every 10 years or so. That's on average what happens. So small caps have severely lagged over the past five years, which is why most of my portfolio is positioned into small cap companies. And this one's just kind of crazy. Its market cap is $67 million. If you had enough money, you could buy this entire company for $67.5 million. The reason that's crazy is because this is just a small sample of their customer list currently. Arctic Glacier, Frito-Lay, Mondelez, Pepsi, AutoZone, Costco, P&G, Walmart, Caterpillar, Nissan, FedEx, etc, etc. This company provides lithium ion batteries to the material handling sector. So think forklifts, lift trucks, warehouse robotics. They also have a small business segment where they provide stationary energy storage at electric vehicle charging stations that are solar powered. This company is going to do 66 million dollars in revenue and if we go back and look at their market cap, they're basically going to do their market cap in revenue this year and this company, a little bonus, is becoming profitable. I actually believe that they just achieved profitability this quarter, and we will see that reflected in the financials when they report their earnings. But this is really just simply undervalued. There's no other way to put it. Even the three analysts that cover this stock expect the company to be profitable in 2024. So the risk here is really pretty low for dramatic upside in my personal opinion. This company is growing at 56% this year, projected to grow at 26% next year. In, in the years following, I believe this company is going to continue to grow at 25, 35, 40% every single year. I also think part of the reason Flux Power stock hasn't gotten the respect it deserves is because the company just doesn't hold that much cash on their balance sheet ever. As of the previous quarter of the report, they only held $790,000 on their balance sheet. But the reason I believe that this company has actually achieved profitability already is because if you actually read the 10Q, which is something that a nerdy guy like me likes to do, this is the sort of stuff I provide my members in the Discord server, they give us more up-to-date information. The quarter end was the end of March, but they said as of May 10th, the company had a cash balance of $1.4 million. And if you continue reading, they had not tapped into their credit facilities and they also did not dilute shareholders. So this money had to come from somewhere. I believe it came from profitability. They're finally selling these lithium ion batteries at a profitable rate. Over the coming weeks, I'll be putting together a valuation spreadsheet for Flux Power that I'll make available in my Discord server, but I, I believe that Flux Power should be a $15 to $20 stock pretty easily, just given the fact of their revenue growth annually, as well as their profitability metrics that they are starting to achieve. And then lastly, my third stock is PayPal. Now, you might think this is boring, but don't go away because this is perhaps the easiest money out there in the stock market currently. If we go back to the end of 2021, this was nearly a $300 stock, and it's all the way down to $69. <laughs> And this is just crazy. The company is trading at a 13 forward PE. At a minimum, PayPal should be trading for a 20 PE, if not a 25 to 35 PE, given the fact that their profitability is growing like crazy. Their earnings per share is growing like crazy, and their revenues are going to continue to grow at 10% plus for years and years and years to go into the future. This is a very, very healthy company. If you ask me, PayPal should easily be a $200 stock. This is another one I'll put together a valuation spreadsheet for, for my members in the Discord server, so stay tuned for that. But I believe, sneak peek, that this should easily be a $200 stock. If you're curious what has dragged the share price down, it's the fact that 
their CEO is stepping down at the end of this year, which adds a lot of uncertainty to any stock in the stock market. Most of the time when a CEO announces they're going to resign, unless they've been a terrible CEO, the stock price also goes down because it adds uncertainty and investors don't like uncertainty. You also have the fact that PayPal isn't just PayPal. They own Venmo, they own Honey, they own Braintree so many different companies. And whenever the consumer is hurting, PayPal will also be hurting because if the consumer spends less money, they're spending less money with PayPal's services. So I think personally, all these negative economic outlooks that have been put out there by economists has drug PayPal's share price down. This fintech space has been trashed and thrashed and thrown around, whether it be SoFi, PayPal, Cash App, any of these companies, look at their share prices. They are down significantly. PayPal, I think, is the best opportunity because PayPal is not going anywhere. And you also have a management team that is buying back shares of their stock like crazy. A management team buys shares back of their stock when they believe their stock is tremendously undervalued. PayPal expects $5 billion in buybacks this year. So the company itself is going to be a big bidder on the stock price. And it's always a lot easier to make an investment when you know the company itself believes it's undervalued. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, you are a rock star. Comment down below what stocks you plan on buying this month in July. Hit the like button to support my channel. I also appreciate hitting that subscribe button. I have a valuation spreadsheet already made out for Workhorse. I'm working on Flux Power and PayPal. Those will be out to Discord members very, very soon. Keep your chin up, 10 toes to the ground, stay blessed, peace out.